What is up, bodyweight exercise fans? In today's video, I'll be sharing with you a calisthenics lower body workout routine. We begin with a whole body warm up routine because even though we won't be training our upper body, we'll be still using basically the whole body in order to propel ourselves forward during dynamic exercises, to stabilize our body through our core, and we'll also use joints such as our shoulders to create momentum. So the recommended warm-up routine is the one I shared with you a few weeks ago. I'll include it in the top pinned comment below. I'll be also using two more supplementary exercises in order to make sure that we warm up very efficiently the lower body before we begin. This will be calf raises. I did 15 reps for the first one and 20 reps for the second one and another two sets of jumping rope. Here I did a total of 100 skips. Our first exercise will be wall jumps or box jumps. You can do these outdoors, you can do these indoors, as long as you find a surface that is at a height that you can jump with proper form. What I'm doing here is what I call a half ladder, meaning I start with two reps and I go up by adding two reps per set with 21 seconds of rest in between until I reach the point that I can't do another set with proper form, meaning until I reach technical failure. Once I'm done, I take one minute of rest and I move on to what I call plyo burpees. Now, you all know what burpees are. What are plyo burpees though is a burpee where you focus on the vertical jump. So you don't care about doing push-ups, you know, you don't care about getting a lot of reps. Instead, you want to make each rep as hard as possible by jumping as high as you can. We do the same thing here, meaning we do half a ladder, starting with two reps and adding two reps per set with 21 seconds of rest in between until we reach technical failure. And once we're done, we take one minute of rest and we move on to our next exercise, the reverse Nordic. Now, I should let you know that I'm quite the amateur, as you can see with this exercise. I've tried it in the past and I consider it an excellent exercise. I use it a lot with the people that I coach here locally, but because it's extra hard for me due to my uh, <laughs> prosthesis, due to having half a leg less than most people, I was always extra thoughtful about it. You know, I was looking for ways to do it, to use both of my legs. So, you know, that's a criterion that I always use when I choose an exercise, I always make sure that it can train my body in a way that is as balanced as possible, especially when it comes to my lower body. But I found that using this loop band around my gymnastic rings in order to make the exercise assisted helps me to focus on both legs and, uh, you know, therefore I decided to start working on it and to get as good at it as possible. The next exercise that will be supersetting this exercise with are glute bridges. And by supersetting, I mean that you try to not take um, rest here, you know, the moment you're done with your reverse Nordic, just switch as fast as possible to your glute bridges. I'm doing here my bridges with a mini loop band around my knees, pushing outwards. If you don't have a band, you can use a belt as I've shown you in the past, or you can also do the single legged. This way, we also combine a knee dominant exercise with a more hip dominant exercise, you know, trying to keep things again as balanced as possible. For my next superset, I'll be combining wall sits with sprints. Ideally, do these on a hill. This is the best way to train the lower body. You know, hill sprints, one of my favorite athletic exercises for the lower body. But uh, if you don't have a hill, that's okay. You can also do these on a flat surface. Just make sure that you choose something that is low impact on your knees. So, you know, choose something like uh, dirt or grass or basically anything that is soft and is not cement. Now, the wall sit that I'm doing here is a pulse wall sit, meaning I have a slam ball between my knees and I squeeze it as hard as possible for 20 reps. Once I'm done with 20 reps, I either leave the ball to drop and I move on to another 30 seconds of crushing the wall, meaning I'm pushing the wall through my back and my lower body as hard as possible until I reach basically technical failure. Or I squeeze the ball as hard as I can for as long as I can, as if I'm trying to pop it. 
This way we also take advantage of the pre-fatigue training method, meaning that we choose an exercise that brings a muscle group, in this case, the lower body, the quadriceps, um, as close as possible to technical failure. And we move on next to another exercise that targets again the same muscle group in order to recruit muscle fiber type two of that muscle group as fast as possible and uh, create that stimulus that leads to hypertrophy, that leads to increased strength, you know, once we recover and uh, creates this whole anabolic response afterwards. Now, keep in mind that even though calisthenics can't produce the same intensity a heavy barbell squat can produce and overall lifting heavy weights can produce, if you're smart enough with your training, if you combine the right exercises, if you use um, smart training methods such as pre-fatigue, overall, if you learn to train your legs close to technical uh, failure, you can still stimulate hypertrophy, you can still strengthen the legs, you can still build strong, lean, and aesthetic legs, and in my opinion, a set of legs that also match a lot better an overall aesthetic calisthenics physique. Plus, you also build a lot more functional legs, legs that can respond in any kind of athletic situation. And finally, it's for me at least, in my opinion, and a lot more fun way to train overall. So that was all. Let me know if you want to see more of these lower body calisthenic workouts. I have a bunch of them, and on next time, keep on training.